Hello, I'm here in Blackbrook, in Loughborough, in, the, uh, in Leicestershire, the East Midlands. Uh, the source of this river is in Charnwood Forest, uh, near Coptoke, north of Coptoke, by a place called Hill Farm, which is 150 metres above sea level. Um, the Blackbrook is a tributary of uh, the River Saw, uh, which is that way, um, and it meets the River Saw just to the north of Loughborough. What we're doing today um, is uh, we're looking at to what extent does Blackbrook follow the Bradshaw model. And the Bradshaw model tells us um, a lot of different things about how the river acts. Um, the uh, velocity, discharge, width and depth as we go further downstream should increase um, and um, the load, the bed load side should actually decrease uh, and that's due to erosion um, on the bed load. Uh, we are going to also look at the load particles and look at power's index of roundness and see how the roundness of the bed load changes as we move further downstream. We're collecting data from two sites today, this site here and one site just a bit further upstream. So we're going to look at the differences between those two. We're going to show you how we collect all the data just at this site today. Before you take part in any field work, you should always um, complete a risk assessment of the site that you're going to. Uh, I've created one for today. Uh, you have a table that you need to complete as I talk you through the different things that could be a risk for us today. First of all, we have uneven and wet ground. We have to decide whether this is a low, medium or high risk. I'd say that this is probably low to medium risk uh, today. Uh, ways that we can minimise this uneven and wet ground um, is first of all by having a safe access point, which I've chosen. You should also make sure that you're wearing appropriate footwear uh, for uh, being in a river and on the surrounding banks. Secondly, there could be unknown substrate. That means something that we don't know what it is in the river. Um, basically, don't touch it. Um, if you're not sure what it is, get out of its way. Uh, thankfully today there's nothing that I can see really that is coming um, down the river. So that's probably a medium to low risk again. Thirdly, um, we could get lost. That could be a risk, um, but thankfully today um, I've got maps. I knew where we were coming. We've got our phones with us so that we can contact people if we do get lost. Um, and then finally, um, there could be extreme weather, which is unlikely in the UK but it could be very hot, so we should make sure we minimise that risk by wearing sun cream, um, bringing water with us. It could, be, um, it could rain a lot. Um, we should then make sure we're wearing appropriate footwear, bring appropriate clothing with us. Um, if it has rained, we should be aware that there could be more water in the river as well, and so we should be very careful in case of flash floods. So that would be really a low risk for extreme weather uh, because of where we are in the UK. Before we do our field work, uh, we have to write a methodology. A methodology is what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be doing it, and what we're going to need. We also have to think about what limitations there could be and how we can overcome those when we're out in the field. So first of all, uh, we will be measuring the width of the river. To measure the width of the river, we're going to be using this metal tape measure. This tape measure only is, uh, is only five meters, so a limitation of this is um, that we can only go a place where it's a um, maximum of five meters. Um, also, when we measure, we're going to measure from where it is wet from uh, on the bank all the way to the other side. We're not going to be looking at the whole bank width, just the width of the water today. Uh, to measure the depth of the river, we're going to be measuring across this width here. We'll be using the tape measure and the meter stick. We'll keep the tape measure across the river and then every 20 metres we're going to place this um, metre stick in the river and read off the depth of the water. We've got to make sure that we don't push it down into the water, um, into the bed load, um, because it will make um, our results inaccurate. Um, a, another limitation um, is the fact that this metre stick doesn't have millimetres on it, so we're going to have to estimate um, in terms of those um, bits in between there. Um, you can also see that as the water is hitting this meter stick it is actually coming a bit further up so we can get a little bit of inaccuracy 
in terms of the, the depth of the water there. We will be measuring the velocity of the river, that's like how fast it is flowing. We'll be using again our um, measuring tape, we're going to measure five metres down the stream in the centre and we're going to be using a rubber duck to uh, place in the water and time using a stopwatch how long it takes to travel five metres. Uh, we're going to do this at least three times so that we can get a more accurate reading, we'll create an average of that. Um, to make this better we could use a velocity meter which is what we just place in the water and it spins around and it tells us a very accurate reading of the velocity as well. We're going to be using a rubber duck uh, because it floats uh, and we can see it very easily in the water. Other things that you could use uh, could be dog biscuits uh, because if you do lose a dog biscuit it's not too bad on the environment. If we lose this rubber duck we could have some issues in the environment as well. And then finally we're going to be measuring the bed load size. So we're going to take 10 um, pieces of bed load from the centre of the river. We're going to um, measure the length, the width and the depth of those and create an average of that. Um, we'll pick these um, randomly. I'm not going to choose which ones are the prettiest. They're just going to be 10 random ones from the same spot. Uh, we're also going to look at power's index of roundness, which is a class from one to six. And we're going to look at how round they are, then we're going to compare them with the other site as well. To make it more accurate, so a limitation of this is I'm just using a ruler, but we could use things called calipers, which are very, very accurate and you put the stone in it and it tells you um, digitally um, the size of the rock. So we're going to start measuring the width of the river using the measuring tape. Uh, you can see here one person is holding it on one end and the other person walks carefully across the river um, looking where they're walking to make sure they don't slip over as well. They're going to hold it down to uh, the river, uh, the river surface and then Tim will read out the width of it there. As you can see we have some issues with the water so they've got to make sure that it is maybe just above the water's surface and try and read it off as accurately as possible. So do we have a width of the river? 4.97. What we're going to do now is we're going to measure the depth of the river. So we've still got our um, measuring tape across the width of the river. And then every 20 centimetres, we're going to place the um, metre stick into the water and read off um, where the water hits the top of um, a measurement on the metre stick. So we've got four centimetres. Four centimeters. Six centimeters. Six centimeters. Seven centimeters.
So as you can see, in terms of equipment that we're using, um, it would be more accurate from a better meter stick, but also um, if we had some waders instead of wellies as well because of the depth of the river. About 14, I think, still. 3 So we're going to now measure the velocity of the river and um, as you can see we've got um, 5 meters uh, measured out in the center of the river and we have our rubber duck here we're going to time it using a stopwatch how long it takes to get from 0 meters all the way to 5 um, so let's let's go for it Go Stop. 7.11 7.11 right let's do it again how are we going to get it to Tony <laughs> Okay our second time of measuring Six point six two. Six point six two. And then our final time of um, measuring how fast the river is flowing. Six point seven one. Six point seven one. So we'd obviously try and do this a few more times if we were doing it um, again um, to try and make sure we get as an accurate reading of the velocity as possible. I'm going to collect the bed load uh, sample now. As I said before, it is a random sample, so I'm just going to choose 10 from the centre of the river and then we are going to measure them. So I'm just going to take all of these because I've just grabbed a handful and count them once I'm back on the boat. So these are our 10 randomly sampled uh, pieces of bed load. As you can see, there's a variety of sizes and of roundness. Um, most of them, as you can see, are quite small. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure along three axes. So the length of this one is eight centimetres. The width is 5.5. And the depth, which is quite difficult to do, but we take um, the widest depth of it, um, is about 3.5. And in terms of power's index of roundness, you have to have a look at um, the uh, index and decide what class that could be. And I'd say this one is probably sub-rounded, so therefore class four. Uh, let's choose the next one. This next one is a very, very small um, piece of bed load. Length we have is 1.5. Our width is 1.7. And our depth is 1.4. In terms of um, power's index of roundness, um, it's less round than the last one, so I'd probably say it's class 2 angular because there are quite a few angles in that one there. This is um, our second site that we've been looking at, which is further upstream from the first site, so we'd expect to see on the Bradshaw model that it would be um, the width would be less, um, the velocity would be less. Uh, but the bed load size would be maybe bigger and more angular. Uh, however, it's not that far from the first site we looked at, so it might be very, very similar to that first site. The uh, results you will see um, on the screen.